if there were two characteristics that I would pick to describe the current generation of China's leadership, they would be pragmatism and patience. Patience in the sense that cultures that have existed for thousands of years, be they Chinese or Indian or Persian or Egyptian, basically operate on a much different scale. Uh, they believe that history is on their side. Uh, there's a deliberate pace to change, and an expectation of dramatic change is just unrealistic. Uh, the Chinese have been successful in taking advantage of the uh, changes that have happened around them by focusing very uh, uh, specifically on their five-year plans over an extended period of time to dramatically grow over the last 30 years. So patience is a very important attribute. Pragmatism in the sense that I think that this generation of uh, Chinese leadership is very pragmatic and they look for solutions as opposed to getting bogged down in uh, ideological issues. There are always on both sides factions who tend to take a more extreme position. But my uh, uh, sense of uh, Chinese leadership is that uh, they look for a balance and the word balance is very important in terms of their deliberation, in terms of consensus-driven decision-making, in terms of not, in terms of making sure things don't go too far out of kilter uh, in, in arriving at decisions. China obviously has come a long way. In terms of the next decade, there are five areas that one can reasonably expect to see uh, change. The first is financial reform, and that is allowing uh, the intermediation system to uh, bring together savers and uh, uh, borrowers of money much more efficiently than exists today. That will require liberalizing the banking system, allowing for more competition, and uh, that in turn will result in a much more efficient uh, economy. No economy that I'm aware of has become a global power without having a world-class financial system, and that requires liberalization. The second area is economic reform, uh, and that is largely a rebalancing of China's growth model, which heretofore has been one driven by exports to one driven by stimulating domestic consumption. And that's going to take some time because you can't take a super tanker and turn it rapidly around. The third area of uh, change is going to be privatization. Uh, the state-owned enterprises uh, many are not as efficient as they could be, and the time really has come for uh, privatizing uh, these institutions, allowing more competition, and as a result, these institutions could get far stronger than they are today. The fourth area is price reform. There is still significant control of different prices by the government. Allowing market forces to set prices will result in a more efficient economy. And the last area is social reform. And that is an area that is going to require care. The Chinese view of social stability is different from the Western view of social stability. And they'll have to tackle it uh, in a way that f fits with Chinese culture and Chinese view. It's not that a Western orientation is necessarily going to be the way that they will go, and I don't think that the uh, current generation of Chinese leadership wants to see that happen. They, they, they would like to see change happen on a scale that is more controllable. So those are the five areas that I see the new generation of leadership uh, focusing on.